Hey folks, Lone Wolf here again. Um, workshop day again today. Um, the little gizmo. Something I've been wanting to try for a while. Uh, but again, I held back until I was pretty sure it was something I wanted to do. But today we're going to fit this decat link pipe to this. So if that's interest here, stay tuned. Okay then folks, to put this on, I think we've got to do one of a series of uh, removals to get at it. First thing we'll do, and I'm going to take the end can off, the old uh, fire torch, and the link pipe, that short link pipe there. I'll drop them off first, then I'll drop you down here and have a look. And you can see the bash plate underneath. I think there's four to four to five six bolts holding that. The bash plate will come off. And then from what I can see, that looks like there's a, uh, a collar here that you've got to unloosen to get off. The top end is on the um, where the link pipe goes, so that'll be off. But there's another bolt hidden inside here somewhere there may be a case I've got to take off this footrest assembly and brake assembly and move it out the way to get at it now I'm thinking normally I would have done this on my other stand lifted the bike up in the air to get easy access to everything but if I'm going to need to remove this gear the, sorry not gear the brake uh, foot brake lever and foot pedal that's where my abba stand would naturally bolt onto plus it would be underneath here which I think would might give us a bit of an issue uh, when we're trying to get wangle things off so I think what we'll do we'll have a we'll have a start and see how far we get and uh, I'll uh, bring you along on the journey okay folks so I've uh, took off the end can the link pipe and the underneath um, bash plate easy peasy I can show me down there bash plate I'll clean all these before they go back on obviously they could do the good bash plate's terrible do the good cleaning but so there's enough to do I think it was um, four 10mm bolts under the, the uh, bash plate and then two front um, Allen bolts and then the exhaust because it's my arm my fire torch that's easy enough to put on that's just the one clip at the back under the springs off the link pipe and then the the clamp there that goes on to what is at the minute the the decat so that's a straightforward easy job I think the next thing now is to have a look at getting this uh, this decat off I'll have a look and see how it is Right folks, let me show you some bits. Bash plate off. Don't move the camera. Bash plate off, you can see. You've got to get these three bolts here out. They're old. Your foot rest on because there's another bolt there that you've got to get out there to get the cat off. There's one underneath at the bottom and there's one the opposite side. When you come to do it, you'll see them, but don't get fooled thinking oh, it's just easy jeep peasy because there's four bolts. Um, as I say, you're going to get this footrest off to get to the one that's there because you'll never get it otherwise. And you can see that in there. One in there, is that it? I'll try and get my hand through the back so you see it. There, see me finger. Footrest there, you might, you might see it from there. There, that's it, you can see it. It's there. There. 
there's one on the opposite side at the top and there's one underneath the one underneath you can only get with a spanner you can't get with a socket the one above it you can get with a socket but this side you've got to take this off to get your foot rest off so you can get this one and what do you end up with let me show you Okay, so you end up with that. The cat in all its glory. And it weighs a bloody fortune. It weighs a ton. Right, so the cat's off. Other than that, we get this link pipe in. Hopefully it'll be a bit easier than getting that one out, because it was a right pain, I'll tell you. You know, you've got to be on your back getting the side off. You can get it higher on a stand. You'd do it easier, but obviously, So you always you get it off on a stand, it'd be easy. But for me, I'd rather use the centre stand. If I use my Abra oil lift, it would be in the way there, I wouldn't be able to get it off. Right, so I'll so have a good getting this mid pipe on now. So as I say, it's not it's not an hard job. Anybody with any basic tools, a bit of knowledge and a garage can do it. The the trick I think is when you've disassembled everything, which is quite straightforward, is the um, pick the link pipe and bolt it on to the bolt it only has one bolt to secure it anyway and put that on three parts fit three parts tight and the, and the bolt behind the foot rests to hold it I was trying to do it without doing that to try and get the fixation at the bottom end and it was impossible that clamp at the bottom is a wicked piece of kit it's easy to use like it is at the, the exhaust at the back end where the uh, end pipe fits but underneath it's a nightmare based on the principle that you just can't get in the the, the gap between the headers pipes and the, the frame is not an impossible they must assemble the pipe and then put it on at the header end that's all i can think of because it took me ages three four hours to do it messing about but i got it in the end so we're all done that's it link pipe on everything I'm just going to fire it up and let you listen to it and then I'm going out on the road and give you my thoughts. Right, that's the... Uh That's a microphone on my collar. I'm about five, six foot from the rear pipe. It is loud. Don't get me wrong. My other pipe was loud, but this has made it worse. Right then folks, right then folks, so I love it or hate it, that's the noise it now makes. It sounds like a Moto 2 bike, sorry, Mo yeah, Mo Moto 3 bike. If you've got a race, it sounds like a Moto 3, it's stunning, but it could well be too loud. It's probably too loud for a lot of people, but I'm a 71 year old. Uh, Part time hooligan when I got my IAM jacket on. Head on, sorry. I say it is loud. It is loud. I mean, the, the fire torch made it loud, but removing the, the cat has put a couple of decibels on it. 
Um, not quite hooliganish. I used to have an S there as an XR, and the pipe on that was wicked. But this is just a deep, barrelly note. When I go out into the ride, you might notice it off the camera uh, when I'm riding and hear it there, probably more than uh, just with the microphone stuck up the back of it, because I don't really think that gives a, a really good uh, sound of what it's like, to be honest, because you're right in the firing line. And uh, to me, I think it's a true sound. But uh, when I'm out on the bike, um, my microphone in my arm, it should pick it up, and you should be able to tell then how loud it is. Would I do it again? Possibly not. Um, it's a lot of faff if it's going to work or do anything. Now, at the minute, I ain't rode it. So I don't know whether or not it's going to make any difference to mid-range, bottom range, snatchy throttle or anything. I'm hoping it's going to even a little bit more out. I don't think, it definitely ain't going to cure it, the snatchy throttle, because if it had have done, everybody would have done it. Everybody who's been on the site and had the same issue would have done it. Okay, folks. So I'm out on the bike. Show me boys, eh? I'm out on the bike. I'm running it in rain at the minute because that's what I normally do. I normally run it in rain mode till it gets warm and then switch it over to uh, to uh, sport. I don't expect it to cure this. Uh, This snatchiness, I don't think for one minute it'll do it. If it had done it, somebody had put it on the, on the internet now, wouldn't they, and said it does it. So I don't quite know. I know it drops a lot of weight off the boy, but it's a good two or three kilos. Let's get it warm first. First impression is it is louder, definitely loud. You can. Uh, I can hear it through my earplugs. It's not, I wouldn't say it was hooligan loud. As I say in the video, I only said like a mount out too, boy. We'll have a run down the jaw cottage way right? and then uh, up some twisty lanes and then back. I go for I must admit sometimes when I've run this bike on car on uh, rain and then swapped it over to sport I've had no issues it's took till later on in the day when I've been out that I've uh, come across it but as I say I, I, I honestly don't believe it's going to be a cure I think the uh, the sprocket thing might be a cure, but I think that'll just alter your rev range. I think that's how that works. Right, we're going over to the sport now. If you're going to feel it, that's where you're going to feel it. initially don't feel any difference now uh, it feels like a bit more punchier performance wise but it's hard to do it because it's pretty quick enough for me anyway but it definitely feels a little bit more punchier but I wouldn't say anything else the main criteria we was looking for is the uh, drop the snatchy throttle I'm going to try and get through somewhere where I can get to the I think it's just still there, I just felt it a little bit. It's 3,000 to 3,300 to 4,000 revs. Oh, 
might be me, but it definitely feels a bit more punchier. It's still there folks, you can still feel it. Maybe not quite as bad, but there's definitely still the uh, little glitch on it. There, see it? If you look at the rev counter, just on there, 3,000. At 3,300 to 4,000. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go a bit farther up, turn off, and I'm going to change modes to off-road because I found that that mode definitely smoothed it out. So I'll go up a bit farther and change our modes. Sure, I don't mind this in off-road. I'm quite happy with this in off-road. To me, it's, it's a more linear power, and then I've got my big push there. I don't want to do something. You know you're up the rev range all the while. You tend not to be in that area of two or three to three and a half to four thousand revs. Which to be fair is the sweet spot when you're knocking about. Well, I put a little bit more punch in the off-road, but it's, uh, that's as good as gold. That is off-road. I'm off and riding this all day. Okay, folks. So was a. As a final view, definitely an improvement on I think the power output. Not by a great, you can just feel that little bit more, if you want, surge. So that's point one. Point two is that it's still snatchy. I think without the major fueling issue, fueling map, you're never going to change it. But if you do drop it into off-road mode, it does tend to smooth out the fueling somewhat and make it very pliable about town. And you've also got the added punch that if you give it a bit of a tweak, it goes off like a scolded cat. The noise, well, the noise is subjective, any. Some people write lonely mouth, pedaling lawnmower engines in, sound like a lawnmower. I like to sound like I've got something between my legs. And this definitely is fruity now. Installation wise, it ain't a, it ain't a five minute job. It, it's easier than you think. You just got to be careful with that one clip underneath when it joins the exhaust. Get everything lined up, and to get that on is a real pain. But once you've got that on, the rest is cinch. So all in all, would I recommend it? Well, it cost me about twenty-six quid, mate, from uh, folks from uh, our friends abroad. A bit of postage and everything, I think it was 26 quid with the postage. Because I think I bought somewhere else as well. So, with 26 quid and a few hours on your hands and knees, spandering, I can't complain. So it's Lone Wolf saying thanks for watching. Don't forget, tick, like, subscribe. Keep the channel growing. Until the next time, it's the Lone Wolf saying bye for now. Remember, just be careful out there. Lone Wolf, bye for now.